Listen to the rumble. Listen to the roar. Slowly in three. They'll be flying off four. Watch them now. All right, here we go. So tonight, I am sitting down with a buddy of mine, and when we started this podcast, we did an intro, and I mentioned that the gentleman, who is actually a kid, I call you a kid, how old are you? I'm 29. 29, you're a kid. I had mentioned that the kid helping me was going to remain incognito, and we were just going to call you the tech advisor, and the reason for that was your job and we thought it might kind of cross over and cause issues but since i don't make a dime from this you don't make a dime from this we just do this for fun it doesn't matter so introduce yourself tell us who you are yeah so uh, my name is cameron nevue uh some of you guys have seen me on instagram as altered stock altered um, stock yeah yep, yep. Yeah, I, uh, I think I saw that on a USAC page. On a yeah. USAC page. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's, uh, that's good, Anytime man. you see Altered Stock or Cameron Nevy photo uh, credits on USAC, uh, that's who's talking right now. Um, uh, basically, I go out there, I shoot. Uh, what Josh was talking about with my day job, uh, I'm an editor for an auto magazine, uh, Haggerty Magazine. Uh, I'm an that's assessor. Haggerty Insurance. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Like so like uh, classic car insurance. Exactly. So the classic car insurance, uh, they started putting on a magazine years back. Um, they kind of uh, uh, poured poured some funds into it. Uh, more recent years, kind of bolstered it up. Went to which is six, unheard of these days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, went to six issues a year, and uh, and then with that kind of increased the staff. And I was one of the staff increases. Uh, cool. I was originally I worked for Haggerty. Um, we can get more into this later, but I worked for Haggerty. Uh, with the uh in their sales department like i onboarded in their sales department and i can't sell water to a well so uh you know it was uh but basically that was my foot in the door and then they found out that i'd like to wrench and like to uh like to surround myself in everything automotive and uh eventually i got the call from my boss now um who is the editor-in-chief of the magazine and he was like what do you want to move downtown or down to uh southeast michigan and uh work for us down here in the magazine and i was like yeah okay. so i moved from traverse city to uh southeast michigan that's what i was going to ask you you grew up in, up in traverse city which is all the way up at the top and if if we were doing this in person i'd hold up my hand and show you where like every michigan person does yeah i yeah. had to get used to that where they hold their hand up and show you where they live yeah yeah i uh, i grew up in the pinky uh if you if, if you got a hand of your own in front of you right now i grew up on the pinky uh i've been to traverse city that's a big like tourist spot it's gorgeous up there big like it's right on the lake. There's rock fixtures. It's it's beautiful. Yeah, it's uh it's badass up there, especially during the summer. There's a lot of stuff to do. Um, it's very touristy. For ten years, I sold cherry pie to tourists. Uh, <laughs> but the only drawback is the uh, the lack of racing that's up there. And, and uh, short had, summer, had, man. Short summer. Very short summer. And then we had a we had a our closest short track was uh, appropriately named Cherryland Speedway. Nice. Um, but that closed down. Uh, was it when, dirt or pavement? It was dirt. Okay. And my dad actually raced there back in the uh, early 80s, uh, street stocks. And um, it was a little podunk track, but it was, you know, it was a lot of good entertainment. And uh, if it was still around, you know, it might get like a Hell Tour show or like a, you know, World of Outlaws Late Models or something like that if it was still around. But kind of shitty deal what happened to it. And, uh, um to the neighborhood move in and run it off yeah so this guy bid on it and then uh with you know promises of uh of revitalizing yeah, it and then immediately the turned around and sold it Damn. to like a power line company Damn. so that's it's common man yeah so when i moved back down here uh, i got the job with the magazine uh we work out of ann arbor michigan where'd you uh, go to school at went to school at u of m okay yeah very good i thought that might have had to do with where you moved to but yeah yeah it you know uh so i went to school at u of m i uh, got my major in math education so i was a school teacher out in phoenix Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, yeah, you were a school teacher in Phoenix. Man, I'm all, I'm all, yeah, yeah, I'm all over the place. You know, I uh, I definitely uh, I had a weird uh, from the time that I lived in Travers in high school to going to U of M in Ann Arbor uh, to teach at out in Phoenix, back up to Travers for starting Haggerty, uh, and then back down to Ann Arbor to work on the Haggerty magazine. I just can 
been bopping all over. That's good though, yeah. man. That's good now. This is the age, you know, at your age in your twenties. That's the time to do it, man. Yeah. You yeah. Know? What? Now you mentioned your dad, and and I've gathered just from being around you, knowing you, that you grew up around racing. I first saw you on Instagram. You were doing the. You had a bunch of really cool pictures, but you were doing the vintage cards. You were making like playing cards for, for you were making up. You were photoshopping and making. I don't know how you're doing it, but you were making up playing cards like baseball cards, for race car drivers. But you were doing like Bigelow and Foyt and like Bentonhausen and like names that twenty year olds usually don't know. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, what's up with this kid? This kid's got some neat stuff. <laughs> yeah, basically, uh, the story behind that is. I was, so I was a teacher. I was a teacher out in Phoenix for uh, three and a half years. Um, I got, you know, homesick and tired of teaching, working too much for not enough pay. So I just quit from teaching, just like cold turkey quit. And I thank my parents for uh, backing me on that. Um, but I quit and I moved back in and I moved into my folks' basement. Right. So I'm in my folks' basement as a, uh, well, what would I be, I'm 25 years old. Uh, just kind of pissed off at the world, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, what did I do? You know, I gave up this teaching career, and uh, so I, while I was applying to jobs, I uh, I just started watching old USAC footage. I started, you know, spending too much time on Google, <laughs> and uh, found all these old relics and these old uh, archived images, and, and that's when I really had the love for like, holy cow, Rich Bunning is out here. Like Lee, Lee, Lee Greenwald. Greena Walt is out there, mm-hmm. um, and those guys were just shooting amazing stuff in the '70s and '80s, and uh, and Mahoney and all those guys. Yeah. And so and basically, they're, they're approachable. Yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> cool yeah. Guys. So like, I wanted to do something with those photos. I wanted to expose them, and then all, you had all these obscure drivers that didn't get the play that like you know um, that Foyt would have, or, or even Rutherford, or you know, I wanted to go for more like. Bill Utz, I'm like who yeah. the hell is Bill Utz? Yeah. You know, yeah. like uh, this guy from I think he was from Iowa. Um, so I like tried to highlight all these obscure uh, baseball cards, uh, and just making them out of my parents' basement, uh, <laughs> applying for jobs in the meantime. It was a fun hobby, and then but what turned it into is uh, I ended up meeting guys like yourself. Uh, it put me into the world. Like I. Uh, started editing uh, sprint car photos and like modern ones, and so like uh, teach- were you taking pictures at that point yet? I was not. I, okay. I didn't even know. I didn't know what the hell a camera was at that <laughs> point. Uh, I uh, um, I worked with like uh, T.J. Crawford and um, Daniel. I don't even know how to see. I, I've never met these guys in person, <laughs> yeah. so I don't know how the hell to pronounce their last yeah, name. Yeah, I know. What but you mean, uh, yeah. uh, but those guys were so cool. Uh, and like, so I started editing photos um, and. Uh, just working with them and just having having fun, kind of like this, not making any bucks off of it, but just yeah. you know something to distract me from uh, the uh, the hell of applying for jobs. <laughs> as a 20, yeah, as a twenty five year old. So, so that was uh, that was that. And then uh, now your dad was into racing, so you grew up yeah. around racing. Yeah, but, I was. And and you mentioned street stocks, and take us back to that. But then I know today he's into gassers and straight axle cars and stuff. So yeah, yeah, when well I, rounded. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, pretty much a mirror to my taste. Yeah. Uh, um, Apple fa- doesn't fall far from the tree. He uh, he started racing in 81. Um, he had a Nova, uh, like a 72 Nova street stock that he started racing, and then he had a Chevelle. And then when I was born, by then he was on his third car, which was a 57 Chevy. Nice. So, nice. so it, like, we're talking 93, he had a 57 Chevy. Really? Quite, oh, that's cool. Quite the sight. At yeah. A, you know, so, uh, <laughs> so those are some of my first memories of him working on that car. And then uh, it was pretty fast. And, um, you know, that's when I grew up uh, going to tracks and doing all that. And then eventually he sold all that stuff and we went karting. Okay. So that's when I got into... On dirt or pavement? Pavement. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, so we did uh, paved road course karting uh, under the WKA, um, the Northern Division or Region, whatever you want to call it, up yeah. in Michigan. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, because in the 90s, man, it was like Were you still running thriving. like flathead Briggs's or was it onto like something else by then? It was uh, open can, so it was... Okay. Uh, yeah, so what, one... KT 150s. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. yeah. They so, rip. Yeah. yeah. Those are good. Awesome. Damn, they rip. Uh, scary fast as a you know as a yeah. middle schooler. That's awesome. So uh, so I did that uh, in middle school and uh, and then uh, kind of sold all that stuff and bought stuff to make a first car and that was a um, 
uh, my 68 El Camino. Nice. Um, so I started working on that when I was, so we sold all the karting stuff. It was kind of stages in my life. So I sold all, sold all the karting stuff and then uh, used that money to pay for uh, stuff for the El Camino. Yeah. Worked on the El Camino from, you know, shit. And it was like two years putting that thing together because oh, yeah. I didn't get any help from dad as much as <laughs> as much as our interests you know uh, cross you know uh, it was a lot of doing it myself I mean yeah naturally yeah, yeah, that's, he'd that's help that's how if, you learn man yeah 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 he'd help if you had questions he was the best teacher but as far as uh, actually getting in there and doing it it was up to me to do it good I'm super thankful for that yeah man it helps you learn yeah so that's awesome now take us you got hired at Haggerty and what I've noticed about Haggerty it really kind of caught my attention um, when, if you would ask me about Haggerty five years ago, the first thing I think of is highfalutin, wine and cheese, collector cars, Bugattis, Ferraris, that kind of stuff. And I know that's exactly what they do. But if you pick up a Haggerty magazine, it's a lot of traditional hot rods and sprint cars and like, I mean, dirt racing and vintage boats and I mean, every all over the place. You guys are really into not only neat stuff but a lot of older stuff like i know it's i mean granted it's classic car insurance but it's the right kind of classic car insurance it I, this sounds like a commercial but it's i'm <laughs> mentioning how i got to know you and and, and jack baroth yeah jack yeah jack ruth baruth um, yeah i mean yeah. he i was following him and yeah. he's into all this vintage stuff and then uh and since then, I mean, Jack went and ran a sprint car out mm-hmm. in California, yep. like the what's which school? Corey Cruzman. Corey uh, Cruzman school. school. There, yeah. And then you guys printed that in the magazine about going and running that sprint car. Yeah, that was um, yeah. So Jack is like Jack came on board last year a little bit ago, um, but that's just kind of a it's a signal of the sea change that's going on there. Uh, you know, is that you, coming from way up? Saying you, oh like, yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So originally, you know, I mean the opulence and all the wine and cheese like yeah that's still there but basically we're trying to show that we're just out there just to have fun and and uh and the rally cry is save driving you know because they're <laughs> into the you know i mean whether we like it or not autonomy is coming yeah. whether it's going to be 100 years down the road or you know 10 it's coming yeah so uh, my my theory on that is yeah it's coming um they'll whenever it comes if it's 10 years 100 years whatever they'll try it they'll work it into service vehicles first trucks taxis stuff like that yeah. i think even if they pass laws to where your daily driver your work vehicle has to be autonomous they're still going to be classic cars oh hell yeah we yeah. all have antiques in our house yeah it's just gonna there's there's always going to be antique cars there's always going to be guys like me that are going to work on them and there's always going to be a call for that yeah so i'm not worried about that work ever going away no, I, no. i'm just not you know it's, no. it's just not going to happen um but it's about maintaining the enthusiasm, right? Yeah, exactly. And you, and you, and you know guys that are too. Preserving and it's, that. it's try to maintain the enthusiasm. And if you look at it the same way with racing, like with racing, what I feel strongly about is maintaining the enthusiasm, making sure the stands are packed, right? Like <laughs> we're so all, hard. we're always yeah. gonna have. There's always gonna be racing. There's always gonna be two guys in a field racing something. Yeah. But we want enthusiasm around it. We want people, you know, yeah. uh, interested in it because it's cool. You did a photo shoot <clears throat> with vintage nascar yeah. cars yeah. here recently yeah and to anyone that looks at that that photo shoot and that picture that cover shot it's neat they all think oh that's cool but they have no idea the kind of work that went into that take us through the from the time they threw that in your lap which is pretty impressive of what they threw in your lap take us from the beginning and talk about what you had to do there yeah yeah so uh my job as a, an associate editor is kind of be the catch-all right so just any shim that's out there, just stack those shims up on Cam's plate, and that's you know that's his <laughs> job. So uh, I could be you know editing a photo in one second, turn around, have to book a car for a photo shoot, turn around, have to edit some words, you know, turn around, have to take out the trash, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that, that yeah. type of deal. And I'm not above that. So uh, and it's awesome, and it makes for a quick day, and it's super fun. So one of these projects that got dumped on my plate, um, uh, or I mean, I. I like volunteer because I heard about NASCAR and I was like, oh hell yeah! Like, yeah, yeah. Um, so the uh, so this got dumped on my plate. They're like, we want to do, you know, we want to. We've never photographed stock cars all together. We want to get, you know, five decades of stock cars, and we want to photograph them on a closed course. Cam, make it happen. One car from each decade. One car from each decade. Jesus. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> right. So that's now, like, now when they throw that in your lap, is it? 
do you got some serious backing? Like whatever you need, do it. Yeah, yeah, Which is, I, that's what's gonna take. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I, I, they uh, they give me ample time to go after yeah. it. So um, you know, with that, uh, basically, I started, but I have no leads, right? <laughs> so like, it's like I'm cold calling like NASCAR Hall of Fame, like. Hi, I'm Cameron from Haggerty, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then, uh, and like, who the heck is this? So, yeah. Uh, At least you got the Haggerty name to, yeah, uh, to yeah. drop. Yeah, and, and gradually that's becoming more and more, uh, having some more clout. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, I'm working with the Hall of Fame, and then eventually the Hall of Fame introduces me to um, Bill Ryan, uh, who is Ryan Built, and then Bill Ryan is super linked up with Ray Evernham, and Ray is super linked up with Keith Sultana. Um, so between those three guys, I think I actually met Keith first. Uh, between those three guys, we were able to supply um, five of the uh, of the six cars we ended up with. Because okay. we had this little caveat where even though we wanted to do five cars, one from each you know decade, we also wanted a winged car. And oh, that's okay. where uh, um, uh, Tim Wellborn came in the Wellborn Muscle Car Museum. Uh, he has a Bobby Isaacs uh, K and K and insurance car. That's, that's the been big, the, the, the Superbird wing cars. Yeah. 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 So yeah. what all cars did you get? What was the, first, the earliest one? Is oh boy, forties or fifties? Uh, yeah. So we had a fifty-three Olds. Okay. Uh, that was the first one, and uh, um, that one was a replica of, and, a, and I say replica with a capital R because it was it was like done right. It was done right. Yeah. Right? I mean, down to the type of leather used in the belt to, to close the door. Wow. You know, it, yeah. it was done right. I wasn't about to let, you know, <clears throat> inauthenticity ruin really oh, yeah. the shoot. So we had that. Uh, the 60s was uh, uh, Pearson's uh, Torino. Uh, yeah, uh, the Torino. The, the blue cool. and uh, gold one. Yes. Uh, it was actually pretty cool. I saw a picture of Dale Jr. sitting in that car on Instagram uh, <laughs> just last month. Oh, I was like, cool, I sat in that car. Like, <laughs> junior, my, my ass and Junior's ass are like in the same seat. Yeah, man, that's um, a neat car. Yeah. So uh, that and then so and then the seventies uh, was this Dicky uh, was it Dicky Brooks, uh, um, this Torino that's like seventy six so it looks like a kind of a beast dung it yeah. just swollen up. It's when they start getting big yeah, and wide yeah, tires yep. and pretty beefy yeah. Nice looking car it's Keith's um, and then uh, and then for the eighties what do we have Oh we had this cool uh, Joe Rutman. Uh, uh, Monte Carlo, yes. Levi, Levi Garrett. Was before, yeah, before, the Garrett cars. Before Levi Garrett even went over to Fre- Hendrick. Uh, so that was like a number five. This one was like number 84 or something. Real odd car. But, In that photo shoot, that might have been my favorite car. Oh, it was mine too. Because that was, that's what we grew up with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was cool. The, um, the, the Monte Carlo. The, I mean, they still look just like the, you know, the body is dead on the Monte Carlo. Yep. It's just a race car. Yep. And out in front of you know, Bill's shop, he has just like all these stripped down, uh, you know, uh, what is it, G body Monte Carlo, oh, just yeah. uh, hanging around. Um, and then '90s car was Gordon's Lumina. Holy cow, we had Gordon's Lumina from uh, you know the Rainbow Warrior car. That's, I mean, uh, you talk about iconic, right? Yeah, That's as I was good like, as it gets, man. when Ray offered that up, I wanted to kiss his feet because I was like, <laughs> this right is perfect, one. you know. Yeah. Um, so we had that, and then as mentioned, the winged car was uh, you know the 1970 uh, K and K insurance Bobby Isaac car. And where did um, you uh, where did you, were you able to find oh, a track? Man. So I was like, because I'm, I'm sure you weren't going to go to some big super like Talladega or something. Uh, yeah, I we, know you want an old track. Yeah, yeah, we kicked it around, and I was like, you know, it's going to look like a parking lot if we do it in Talladega. It's going to look like that track's too wide. You can't yeah. see the turns. You can't do that. And yeah. plus two, like tracks like Talladega, Daytona, they're all owned by corporations now, right? So it's like. Yeah, twelve thousand dollars to rent that out. Yeah, for an hour. <laughs> nah, I'm good. yeah, exactly. So uh, we went to Concord, uh, Concord Speedway, which is this little triangle in the middle of nowhere, but it's close to Charlotte. So a lot so of our no, owners were from yeah, Charlotte. Yeah, so the cars didn't have to come far. Didn't have to travel far. So it all worked out, man. And we uh, we had a pretty badass shoot, and uh, uh, weather held out. And, and all the car, all the cars ran. Uh, all the cars ran. Um, we broke you it. sent me one. You sent me a text that day. You guys were like sitting on the floorboard, holding onto the roll bars, taking pictures. Yep. While exactly. you guys were going around the yep, track. Yep. Exactly. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we had this uh, uh, James Littman, who's a badass photographer. He's out of the UK. Actually, he lives in California. We flew him out over to Charlotte because wow. he was actually uh, he's actually a big Gordon fan. Oh, okay. So, cool. so he'd like, be into it. Yeah, yeah. So it was like this Brit from California who's in Charlotte shooting these stock cars, and it was like. Man, that that guy made magic though. So he was a primary shooter. I was a backup shooter because um, I can hold a camera and I'm yeah. a warm body. So <laughs> so I was a backup shooter uh, just to get like details and stuff. And yeah, it all came together. It was, Man, that's it was awesome. a good shoot. Who was the old guy that was there? You had one guy. 
in the pictures, he looks like the real deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was Bill. Uh, a different Bill, not Bill Ryan. Uh, I'm pretty sure his name was Bill. Um, he was actually the son of the 1953 uh, Daytona 500 winner. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So just look up the 1953 Daytona 500 winner, and his son uh, is the guy that we're talking about, and uh, he was the one. He actually built that 53 Oils in the likeness of his dad's car and surprised his dad. No kidding. Yeah. It, yeah. It, he had to look. It had to look. You could just tell. It looked like you guys had used a time machine. Drug to like him out of Drug it. him yeah. out of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. God, it was perfect. Yeah. Now, you mentioned there you were a backup photographer. Yeah. Um, and anyone that follows you on Instagram under Altered Stock knows that, yeah, you're a photographer. <laughs> Thank you, you. You can do that. You're a damn good photographer. <laughs> Thank you. One of the things I like about your photography is that Maybe because you weren't trained or schooled in the cla- the normal classic ways, your pictures look different than every other photographer out there. You know, it has a totally different look, different feel, and I think that's like what USAC likes about them. It's just a little, it's a mix up. What got you going on photography? Just how that start? That was a weird thing, man. So like I was always into it. And, uh, you know, I'd done those Photoshop projects with those old cards. Um, if you scroll down far enough on my Instagram, you can see those old <laughs> cards that Josh and I are talking about. Um, and then, uh, you know, I started uh, editing photos, putting together some hero cards for some drivers, for some 600, you know, micro sprint drivers and all that. And I was like, well, you know, someday I'd like to get a camera and I'd like to try it all out. And uh, uh, shit costs a lot of money, though, right? <laughs> like, and I'm, I'm not big into technology, and so I have a hard time spending money on it. Yeah. Uh, oh, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, right? So, yeah, we went through that with this podcast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't yeah, know, man. Exactly. I don't know anything about this crap. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, but basically what happened was when I moved down to Ann Arbor and started working for the magazine, we have a closet full of camera stuff. Um, and that camera stuff wasn't getting used on the weekends. Nice. Uh, it just turned out that you know, when the shoots would finish on the weekdays and the video shoots would finish up on the weekdays, um, I'd ask, you know, the the primary photographers, I'd say, hey, what are you guys doing with that stuff on the weekend? You can use it. Really? So, yeah. So you can, I, like, sign it out and take yeah, it. Yeah, that's exactly what I do. So I, uh, so I started signing it out, and I went to my first event that I ever shot. Um, I was at the Hawk uh, at Road America. Okay. I went out to Road America. Uh, to help out, uh, just coordinate some stuff and be a warm body, basically. You know, anybody need a sandwich, go out and, you know, yeah. t- take care of the clients out there. So, uh, but in my spare time, I brought a camera with me. I started shooting there. And that was exactly, it was July 22nd of last year. So I One year ago? One year ago. Damn. Yeah. One year ago. <laughs> that's that's the first time my finger clicked and, and I took a picture other than my phone was a year ago. That, that is going to be uh, inspiring news to young guys that are oh hell yeah yeah maybe it's easy if i if i can do it yeah (laughs) if you can come as far as you came (laughs) in one year yeah that's excellent i'm a dumb dumb so you know if you can if i can do it you can do it uh but basically uh so i started shooting there uh and then my first dirt track uh was august 4th of last year and that was at hartford speedway Mm -hmm. just some like sprints on dirt backcountry stuff yeah uh uh, 360 i think 360s sprints on dirt uh and uh, start shooting that, and yeah, it all started kind of clicking. And then uh, the big upgrade, uh, I started. I went from uh, kind of an entry level camera uh, that I was shooting with well into like we'll say December last year. Uh, I got it my first uh, DSLR, and so if you, it's a it stands for some digital. It's just a bigger camera, right? It's a little beefier. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm, the camera I'm, people that listen to this, they'll know. Yeah, they'll know. <laughs> <laughs> and I still don't know. And like, I'm still like. I'm still, uh, you know, uh, in layman's terms, I, I don't know all the tech stuff. I still have to YouTube stuff all the time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but basically, for all my sprint car fans out there, I went from a 305 to a 410. There you go. <laughs> there yeah, you go. see, there you go. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. So, uh, so all of a sudden now I'm, I'm uh, shooting with this badass camera and um, one of the first events. And that, you own it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. And one of the first events that would kinda I kinda unleashed hell on was uh was No Way Out. And that was the first yeah. uh Brownstown. That and that's when I had been talking to you and uh there was some races earlier in the year that you went to and one of them I think was uh I call it KC because it's always that's what it was when I raced there. Yeah. But I know you were you were trying you wanted to get in the infield and shoot at dirt tracks. Yeah. And like all photographers and being a young lad and honest you were 
asking for permission yes. and being real nice about it. Yes. And you told me, I can't get in the infields of these tracks. And of course, my old race ass, I'm like, dude, just go in there. Just walk in, just charge in there, act like you know what you're doing. Yeah. And to your credit, you wouldn't do that. Yeah. So, and I could just go in there, go in there. <laughs> yeah. So, and I remember at Brownstown for the No Way Out, I told you, I'll meet you there and I will get you in the infield. Yeah. And I remember thinking, like, I don't, I don't know how I'm going to get him in the infield. I'm just going to drag his ass. I'll throw him on a four wheeler and go. <laughs> right. And my plan was I was going to go get Chad Baselug or Landon Simon's four wheeler and throw you on it and just drive in the infield yeah. and leave you there. Luckily, we saw Chad Baseflug, and yeah. ba- I told Baseflug what was going on, and Chad was like, oh, I know the promoter. We'll go talk to him. Yeah. And, and then he he helped you get in the infield there. Yeah. And super. really, like, changed everything. Yeah. I mean, Chad's kind of got a pass now where he's like, anything I shoot, Chad can just have. Cause, yeah. Like, without and Chad, that's what we told you. I told Chad. I said, man, let this kid shoot. Get this kid in the infield, and you will end up with some really cool shots. <laughs> yeah. And he did. Yeah, no, he did. I'm like, uh, yeah, Chad. Now after I, I shoot a USAC race, I just send him a file, and it's like, man, these are yours. Cool. Um, now, how did you get after you started? You, you got kind of some clout, and you were going to the infield of these races. This was just the spring, mm-hmm. um, and and with your job, you're luckily with your job, you get to travel. And you've been hitting a ton of races this summer. How yeah. many, what's your race count up to this summer? Uh, I'm up to 27 different tracks. That's right? it. 27 different tracks Tw- this year, since, this season. Since uh, January 1st, or actually, if we want to, not even the, uh, New Year's, I was probably hungover. I was not at a track. <laughs> My first first race was, I uh, went to the Rumble this year in Fort okay. Wayne. Oh, cool. A, that was cool. 2019's first race. Very good. And then uh, uh, 27 different tracks from them. I would estimate probably about... 30 to yeah. anywhere between 30 and 35 races though because i've doubled up oh you know, yeah yeah <clears throat> you started shooting and, and i i think i sent you like at one point i sent you a bloomington and said you know look up landon simon and look these guys up and yeah. just tell them i sent you and you'll be fine at some point you caught USAC's attention. How'd that go down? Well, I'm an idiot, and uh, I just, and I've told you from the beginning. <laughs> if you want to talk to these guys, just charge right up in there and start talking. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that was sage <laughs> advice. Sage advice. Um, you know, because there's so hey, what I've noticed is there's so many different faces in racing. If you just walk up to a guy and start talking to him, he'll he'll fake that he knows you. <laughs> yeah. He'll be like, I don't remember this guy, yeah. but I should, so I'll be nice. Yeah, and, <laughs> yeah. And then, and then they'll yeah. figure out later, like, oh, I didn't know that guy. Yeah. Like, he's cool. And then you got all those other guys that'll go up and be like, I knew your daddy, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yep, and, exactly. And so. and so you got that swarm around there, and, yeah, you're 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 spot on with that. Um, so, all right, we're in the spring now. I shot Brownstown. Uh, and the reason, to go back to that, the reason why I was so apprehensive was I was shooting a lot uh, for IMSA, and I had just shot uh, Rolex 24. Okay. Right. And yeah. So Hagerty sent you to that. I Hagerty, remember that. Yeah. That yeah. was cool, man. That was badass. I was so glad was like, to hear you were going to that. That was surreal. Um, yeah. Uh, Hagerty sent me on, um, like, Corvette reached out to us like two weeks before, and they were like, you want to take it down there? And we were like, Psh. yeah. Hell so, yeah. 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 <laughs> Hell yeah. And so, um, yeah. So uh, I started shooting that. And, and IMSA is totally a different animal than USAC because IMSA, you got to be credentialed, right? You got to have the IMSA vest. You got to have, it's got to be. That's when you got to be pro. And basically, I took that mentality to like your little holes, like you know, <laughs> like yeah. uh, uh, Atomic. And yeah, I was yeah. like, uh, Atomic, do you have you know, do you have your own branded uh, yeah. you know vests and like, shit? <laughs> Stay out of our infield. <laughs> no wonder they ran. Yeah, you. yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I don't blame them. Uh, so basically, what I learned after that, after Brownstown, uh, was that man, you just got to make it just make it happen yourself so i went to menards and i bought like a construction vest and i just you know i just started making it happen and, good uh bloomington was the first big usac race that I, I shot and i had no reason to be down there other than i had a free weekend and i just wanted to take a road trip so i went down to bloomington and uh that's where i met kirk yeah uh, i don't know how spridges sprit, spr- spridged and spridges spridges wow, yep. yeah how, <laughs> spridge yeah. um dude's awesome yeah kirk introduced me to richie Richie runs all the okay. any article you see on, on usac.com it's probably written by Richie cool. and uh, Richie is uh, he's young too and he knows his stuff and he's super knowledgeable and he introduced me to Richie so um, basically all the stuff that I shot for them we worked out a deal uh, to where they got my stuff at Bloomington and it's just been kind of this relationship back and forth now that when I go to USAC um, they welcome me with open arms and I uh, shoot them a 
uh, you know, a big that's awesome. Uh, a big catch of photos at the end of it all um, after the weekend, and uh, and then that's when you see him on Instagram. That's so, excellent, man. Yeah, I remember I mean, like on Monday or Tuesday, I got a text from Spridge, mm-hmm. and he just said, "Hey, thanks for sending Cameron our way." we love his stuff it's you know it's a little different and we like it and i thought well cameron must have done something right <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you, yeah. you, you met the right guys yeah. now you're, you're you're young and energetic and and i know that's what you're what's driving you and it's awesome and that's what spridge and that's what USAC and everyone that watches your pictures we like you're in there you're trying to get different angles you're taking pictures of the <clears throat> like one of the things i always liked about tj crawford's pictures was he would shoot people in the pits yeah. and kids on four-wheelers and the wife putting tariffs on and stuff like that. That's the stuff that I want to see from, and what I've learned, like in these, in these old racing books, when I'm looking for history, historical pictures from the, all the way back to the twenties, the pictures of the race cars are awesome. That's great. But when I see a picture like of a car torn apart in the pits and they're putting an engine in and there's five or six guys around and there's parts blown out on the floor, those pictures are so rare to find. So when guys like you and TJ are taking those pictures, I I like that because I know in a hundred years, guys like us are gonna like that. Yeah. Um. So you're you're energetic and you're taking these pictures and like you said, you're shooting. You shoot all these pictures and you give them to USAC, and USAC gets to use them. They in turn promote whatever driver it is, so it makes the driver look good. Everyone's happy, except possibly guys that are trying to make a living taking pictures yeah and and that's a real thing and it's something that has to be addressed yeah and like you know i want to be cognizant of that and i and i want to be the most empathetic i can be when it comes to that i want to you know that's one reason why well i mean i don't like to use a watermark in my photos um Mm -hmm. but at the same time i'm not out there posting high-res versions of it so if anybody ever screenshots my shit like it's going to be grainy as hell (laughs) you know and it's it's it is what it is yeah yeah. so it's like if you want to screenshot it and and do it i mean first off that's a knock on your karma you know so that's like first off shame on you and uh i can't judge you but uh (laughs) uh and second off you're gonna get a you know piss poor image quality off of that yeah. Uh, if you really want some, reach out to me, message me, and 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 we'll go from there. I've had guys tell me that you know yeah. that they love your pictures, and and then I see one of your shots on their Instagram, and I know I know because I know the driver that they went to you. Yeah, they, yeah. You know they sent you a DM, said, "Hey man, get, you know I want some shots from this track," and yeah. you obliged. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. And I when we were at the mile this year at the Indy Mile, mm-hmm. I was there with you, and and I my tradition at the mile was always. When they're hot lapping and qualifying, I go down to turn three and four, and I get right on the rail. And the last few years, the last five, six years, you've kind of had to have credentials to be out there, unless you're a dumbass like me and you just walk out there and wait to get kicked yeah, out. Yeah. But you and I went down there, and you had you pulled out your vest, and you had your vest on, and you looked official. But even then, I noticed you respecting the older photographers that were there shooting with their ladders. And I watched you, and you were staying out of their way. Yeah. You were making sure you weren't anywhere in their shots. Yeah. You were standing behind them. Yeah. You gave them their room, yeah. and and they and I could tell they noticed it. And then you get guys like you know you get guys like Rick Lane and these old photographers that they see in you what they were. Yeah. So they're nice to you. Oh, you know, Ed Justice was a good example. Yeah. Of that. You know yeah. he's he, he you know he is an MC photography. He's got all the credentials he needs, and instead of having any attitude towards you he was open arms like yeah. yeah let's help you out and show you how to do this yeah if, if i can talk for a minute about ed because boy ed uh I, i've met so i've had such great friends uh since coming out of the magazine and and uh yourself and ed are in a special category i met ed um he was friend of, uh, our editor-in-chief has been friends with ed and did some like uh did some tv work with him at some point and um and ed actually uh he was my friend back when I was making cards out of my parents' basement. <laughs> he it, would like that. Because he likes the history, him, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would and he would come out, he'd make a comment, he'd be like, and did you know this too? And I was like, oh, hell yeah. Like, His memory is oh unreal. Oh, gosh, it's like a whip. Yeah. So, um, so I met Ed at Rensport last year. Rensport is this big celebration of Porsches at Laguna Seca, and I was there um, with my, you know, 305, if you will, camera. Uh and Ed still, like, he saw this young kid, even with a shitty camera. And he, he, he probably liked that even more. Yeah, and he was like, he was Because so, he still has his first camera. 
Yeah, he does, and and, and he and he met me with such open arms, and, and you know, oh, let me show you this. Let's talk about this. Let's do this. You follow me here, and and uh, and then I met him at Daytona, and he was that way again, and our our paths kept crossing, and I was like, holy cow! So um, we eventually, Ed and I uh, collaborated on this piece for the magazine, in which we took some of his old drag racing oh, photos. Oh yeah, I think I showed you that section. That one where he's on the roof of like yeah. the pit shack, yep. and he shot a yep. forty like thirty or forty car funny car field at Lions Drag Strip. Yeah. Yeah, that um, picture was amazing. Yeah. That's cool. I didn't know you that, you that that I knew that was his shot, his photo, but I didn't know that you guys had kind of got together on that. Yeah, I was put in charge of that section of the magazine, and and they were like, we want to do this like old school, you know, photography stuff, and immediately old school photography, I think, got justice. So, so yeah, I owe a ton to Ed. Um, you talked about Rick Lane. Uh, I was at Jack Hewitt Classic this year, which first time I had ever been to that track. Uh, it, you know. Uh, what is that track? Waynesfield. Yeah, Waynesfield. Uh, yep. Real Field of Dreams type. Oh, of, yeah. You know, I told you just, you'd like that. Man. Yeah. It's the bull ring. It's, yeah. it's awesome. It's the most Michigan, Ohio track ever. Like, you <laughs> yep. know, like. Uh, Cornfield. Uh, cornfields. Yeah. yeah. And so, then a little bull ring. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and, uh, you know, a little bit rocky, but yeah. rocky to the kind of cool where they're chucking rocks and it looks, <laughs> it looks badass on the, on the uh, photos. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Rick, uh, you know, I thought I was being respectful and all that. And uh, I talked to Rick for a long time, and uh, and what I was doing is in the infield, I like a real low perspective sometimes. And, you, know, you, you can really get an angle on the banking where you're kind of, the banking's towering over you. And uh, Waynesfield's got some pretty good banking on one and two, and, um, and I was kind of like shooting up. But what I was doing is I was dipping my knee, and my knee was touching the ground. Uh, and, you know, I was kind of low. And uh, Rick kind of, you know, he let me know that, hey, man, that's not safe and don't do that. And I was like, oh, OK. You know, and, and I didn't think about that. And uh, Rick was super nice about it. And it didn't uh, talk down to you. Just, no, no, There's no. a right way to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a right way to do that. That, hey, dumbass, like all of us have been doing it the right way for 40 <laughs> years. Like, you know, uh, and that's the way to approach it. And uh, I, uh, Rick, I hope I hope he's listening and I hope I, uh, I get to. Uh, shoot with him again you know down there in lawrenceburg because uh he uh he taught me a lot that night uh and uh and that's the kind of mentality that i have to bring right like i'm 29 i don't know jack shit so like teach me tell me tell me you know uh, i I don't know what i don't know so uh how about uh how about rich bunning rich i haven't gotten to shoot with rich uh but i actually collaborated with rich on a website article uh we took some of his old sprint car photos and wrote about those and uh Rich is always, uh, Rich like always likes my stuff on Instagram, and I'm like, that's the he's like, uh, it, it feels good to have those people. He's that, one of them that dudes that's you. been there and done it and yeah. saw it. I yeah. mean, the races he saw. Yeah. You know, hit one of his one of his best pictures that he took. Of, I mean, there's hundreds of them, but one of his favorite pictures is outside of Turn One at Williams Grove for the Open. The whole field of cars is coming into one, pitching it in there. And he's standing at the rail on the outside of the track shooting. Yep. And when you stop and think about where he's standing, you're like, that's insane. That's nuts to stand there. Yeah. And I've asked him about it, and he said, yeah, I lasted two laps, and the security guards came and hauled me off. Yeah. yeah. But he did that to get the picture. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And that's always a fine line with photography is you want to get that bang zoom shot, right? You want to be – you like that shot was it bordered on illegal – it maybe not wasn't it maybe wasn't the safest, but Rich is a pro, right? Yeah, so he was willing like, to yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's always kind of the the balance that you try and strike. You don't want to be you don't want to be an idiot, um, but you want to get that unique angle. Um, so yeah. Has has you had any instances of photographers running you? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah. <laughs> just last weekend, uh, it was like the first time. Uh, so I went to, so USAC was, uh, midgets were out in Pennsylvania, and that's a haul from uh, Detroit where I live. Uh, so I ended up going to, uh, for a vintage, or not vintage, uh, a super modified race. Okay. So super modifieds are like these weird front engine looking things. Um, Everything that a sprint car guy wants to do, they're allowed. <laughs> that's the best you way wanna, to You want an engine it, yeah. offset? We can hang it outside the chassis. Yeah, you this, know, this one car had a 26-inch offset. 26-inch <laughs> offset. Like, are you kidding me? Like, yep. Put, you want the driver out the side of the car? Yeah. No problem. Yeah, they had a Pinto steering box turned upside down and, like, five u-joints like just to get it back to the steering wheel yeah it's like everything insane. you would want to do to make a car fast they're allowed to do yeah it's insane yeah. um so i went up there and shot and uh 
the track was great uh, but I got approached by this photographer and I was like he was just I get that he's trying to run a business right so uh, you know he says well if you're not credentialed you can't come to the infield alright fine you know I get it you're trying to make a business but at the same time I'm just trying there I'm just there trying to get better yeah. right and if you see this 29 year old with $5,000 worth of camera equipment hanging off your shoulder you know he's not an idiot I mean yeah, at least yeah you you're not, not down there with your phone yeah, taking exactly. pictures right? like yeah. I was yeah exactly <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, and, and I just felt like it was kind of a cold embrace it, it wasn't enough uh, uh, questions to as why you're here it was just oh you're not here with the track or the sanctioning body alright stay on the outfield um, so it did suck, yeah. um, and I know I know he's trying to make a business, and so I tried to be empathetic about it, um, but it actually worked out to my advantage <laughs> because uh, uh, this track that we were at has a bunch of little, uh, you know, these real good honey holes all around the outside of the track. Yeah. Where I was like, oh, to that shoot angle. through the fence. Yeah, that, I was like, oh, that angle is cool. Oh my gosh, See, I'm so glad it, I. Yeah. And that know. guy's pictures are the same old car side driver's side of the car going through the turn yeah same thing yeah exactly and that's uh uh that's one big thing you talk about tj uh crawford um and i'd love to meet him in, in, in person sometime I've, I've never met him in person but uh, I've, just, been, I've been on the track running a car and seen him his head and camera underneath the guardrail oh yeah i'm yeah, like yeah. damn tj yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, like exactly. man, we're running yeah and, and but that's what he does um and that's what was such an inspiration when i first started out it was like wow this guy isn't camping in the direct center of the turn getting the same Sun shot. behind him same yeah. old thing exactly yeah. yeah so um you know you bring that up like I love to shoot into the sun. That's like my that. favorite. Yeah. I love it. I love when the sun is backlighting, and then uh, I shoot it real blown out, so you can the shadow side of the car is still lit, um, but then the sun is coming in, uh, and often with a sprint car, you get the sun through the cage. Oh, it looks so good. And so, um, so yeah. For example, you know, I, I, I don't like to camp. I like hot laps. I might be in the center of the track um, if I can, you know get to the outside i like to shoot from the outside and then i like to when night comes i like to shoot from like the grandstands uh just try and get these different angles you know that's cool um, but what's your uh what's your future plans for shooting just as many tracks as you can yeah i don't really know what it's going to turn into yet um I, you know really the main reason why i'm pursuing this so heavy is because i love it um because i love the people that are in it and uh because i think it's allowed me to get better at something that I get paid to do for my day job, right? Yeah. So, yep. so I have a shoot coming up in which I'm going to be the lead photographer for nice. finally, right? Yeah. So that's what that's exactly what it was. That's the up payoff, yeah, exactly, that's right? So all these, you know, it's the same thing with these with the drivers out there. Those drivers are, you know, slogging it, you know, through the weekends and, and hitting up all these little bull rings. When someday they hope they'll get pulled up to the big leagues. Yeah. And uh, so finally, I'll be able to uh, I'll be shooting a feature um, coming up here. Um, and that's not without, you know, swinging that weighted bat. Uh, that is excellent. Uh, at every weekend trying oh, to get yeah. better at shooting. So. Yep, that's excellent. Back to, now we're going to change gears and go yeah. back to this podcast. Yeah. Um, we've been having a blast doing this. Yeah. It's been total trial and error. <laughs> totally. I mean, I knew nothing about this. You knew nothing about yeah. this. It took us, I think, it took us two or three weeks to get it to work. Yeah. Like, to have the right hookups and the right cables and Remember, we dealt with, we were like three weeks straight trying to get this board to work that yeah. wouldn't even accept microphones. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like the one that came with it. Yeah. So we've been all over the place. And one of the biggest questions I've been getting online is, um, why, when will we, when will we be on iTunes and other formats? And the deal is, um, I'll give my side and then you can explain way more of the technical side of it. Um. I've on my phone on like when I watch podcasts I have YouTube Red, uh, it's like twelve bucks a month and with YouTube Red, I get a lot more out of YouTube. I can shut my phone off, I can close the app, nothing, and it all keeps playing. It'll keep right on playing, just like listening to Pandora. Um, I get a lot more of what the vintage racing and the people I follow comes up in the news feed way more. It just works better. So it's never been a problem for me. And I'd forgotten about that until we started doing this podcast. And we only put it on YouTube. And uh, and we talked about eventually someday doing like GoPros and filming it. But that's way down the road. But I'd forgotten about that. And people started immediately asking like when, can it, when will it be on iTunes? When will it be somewhere else? Because 
when they close their app, it goes away. So I put you, of course, I dumped it in your lap just like Haggerty. <laughs> I dumped it on you to get us on iTunes and bring us up to speed on that. Because yeah. I think right now we're at, it, what we found out, and you can correct me if I'm more wrong, is to iTunes defense, they won't just give anyone a podcast space. they got to check you out first yeah. to make sure you're not like some crazy, you know, white supremacy or, some, you know, yeah. Death to America, whatever <laughs> yeah. crazy yeah. podcast. So they check you out. So that's that's good. That's coming. Yeah, it's coming it'll, along. it'll be up. We just posted a new one up, uh, the Dan Lauderville, which is awesome. That's a good one. And uh, I mean, I, I it was fun to sit down with Dan. And the first thing I told him was no pressure. But the last guy we had on was Johnny Rutherford. Yeah, <laughs> like, which was awesome. What like it blows my <laughs> mind. You know, like that was fun. Um, what's uh, what's your Tell us some racing stories from this summer, because this is, you know, you became a USAC fan and you got broken in right this summer. Yeah, you, you literally went and started following some of the most amazing sprint car racing going. Um, what's some of the wild stuff you've seen this summer and some of the races you've seen? Yeah, so growing up, I always wanted to be um, a sprint car driver, and then I had this weird phase where I wanted to be a late model driver. I don't know what the hell oh, I Jesus. was thinking. Uh, no, I'm glad that wore off. Uh, I wouldn't have let you do that. <laughs> As a kid, you know, I was uh, I was huge. Everyone always, I always tease everyone on late models because I am not a late model fan. Yeah. But all my buddies are. Yeah. And I explained to them that late models are great. They keep the hillbillies out of sprint cars. <laughs> That's the only good thing about late models. That's good. Um, yeah, so, you know, growing up, I was always into this. Uh, but the weird thing was is I was always into the World of Outlaw stuff, right? Yeah. Like the wings. Like, I was... I uh, collected those, uh, like, uh, little die cast by racing champions. You know, I had, like, would line those up. or I, I had those rather than Hot Wheels. Um, I was mm -hmm. all about uh, sprint cars growing up. Um but when I started taking photos and started going to the races, I fell out of love with the wing stuff and fell in love with the non-wing stuff. Starting last year, uh, last year I went to Four Crown, um, and I was like, "Oh hell yeah! Like finally I get to see winged 410 sprint cars. This is like this is gonna be the best." And I would I had a better time watching the midgets. Hell, like the, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I had a better time watching the other three series other than you know the 410 yeah. winged sprints. Um, and then I started watching, uh, then I had Loud Pedal uh, TV, and then I and that went to Flow, Ra Flow Racing, and I have that still. And, man, watching all the that non-wing stuff, that really got me hooked because I was like, these cars are moving around. Yeah. You know, uh, they're going a little bit slower, so they're more fun to photograph because you can get, uh, you know, you talk about my stuff. as a, I didn't think of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like to shoot with a, a slow shutter speed, and basically that's like uh, how quickly uh, the shutter closes. I like to shoot real slow, so you get some blur. And those sprint cars are sometimes just too quick that it's just <laughs> it's all types of blurry. Yeah. Uh, so uh, those four ten the the non wings they travel at just the right speed, and uh, you can get some cool shots, and they're all leaned over and twisted out, and on one wheel, on two yeah, wheels, exactly. Yeah, they're unpredictable. Yeah, and those uh, the wing sprints now they're so dialed in that they're practically running straight in the turns. You know, I mean, I mean yeah. comparatively. So, anyways, uh, I mean they're doing their job. That's what this, yeah. you know that's what a wing sprint car is supposed to do. It's supposed to be locked down yeah. fast. And, yeah. And I, my dad and I both are the same way. We try to go to one wing wing sprint car race a season. Just to see the speed. Yeah, it's it's it, to see a so wing car at Williams Grove is mind blowing. Yeah, or even KC is one of my favorite places to watch a wing car. Yeah, they get the vapor trail oh, off yeah. the wing. It's just blow, mind blowing fast, but it's not fun. Not as fun to watch for me. No. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, uh, going back to your original question, uh, the stories I I had uh, Sprint Week was super fun. Uh, it was really hot. I just went to the first two events because that's all I could kind of work around with my work schedule so uh those were so awesome and uh gas city um uh i uh got to hang out with some some really talented photographers like ryan sellers and uh really uh talk to those guys and those guys know so much and they know where to stand and they yeah. know you know uh they're especially ryan ryan's a, a young kid coming up and he, he i think he might be similar age but he knows like that he knows right where to stand to where the car is finally out of the out of the pitch and now it's coming towards you and he shoots it and i don't know how he's got it but he's like he's looking down the barrel of the gun and it looks perfect yeah. he's looking right under the driver's eyes and 
Uh, he's really good the at that right stuff. The right rear's all rolled yeah, under and yeah, digging. Yeah. The front end's up. It's the perfect spot. So Gas City hanging out with those guys um, learned a lot. And uh, Gas City's beautiful track. has a nice uh, lush backstretch. Um, I think my favorite event that I went to was Winchester. Um, yeah, good. I'm so happy you got to see that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Winchester was awesome. Um, and then, uh, well, hell, like, uh, I got to drive Johnny Parsons midget. <laughs> I forgot about the, that. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. This is, mile. We sent you out in that. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been a it's been a wild uh, a wild summer. But uh, those those that are, was Mike Whitney called yeah. me and said, "Hey, uh, you think Cameron would run this midget yeah. at the mile?" Yeah. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah." That Mike was, Mike Whitney is uh, uh, super super happy to to make his acquaintance and friendship. He uh, from that from getting me a ride in, in that midget to. Uh, uh, leaving his pass under the rock outside uh, Winchester, so I didn't have to <laughs> pay yeah, thirty man. bucks. Uh, uh, you know, Mike is uh, Mike has been clutch over the summer. That's what and, racing uh, buddies do. Yeah, so uh, I would say those are probably my top three experiences: the midget, Winchester, and then Gas City was super fun. That's so, excellent. Uh, those were those were some some good ones, and then. Yeah, non sprint car. Uh, I went to a 500 mile snowmobile race. Uh, oh, that's that, right. That was wild. I saw the pictures. I'd like to went to that. Yeah, it was up in the UP. That was crazy. What was it? Uh, 500. 500 miles. 500 on, mile on a, race on a one mile uh, uh, ice track. Was it just a? Track. Was it just a total? Was it an oval or was it? It's an oval. Okay, because the uh, pictures looked like it was. The terrain was kind of interesting. Oh yeah, no, it was an oval, but it was like uh, uh, almost like uh, Pengrove or like all those old tracks uh, where it was an oval but it had some irregularities in the banking and stuff like that and all of a sudden you're going from like 30 degrees of banking to like zero mid turn you know it's <laughs> a, like it, it's a it's a real wonky looking track but they do 500 mi- 500, 500 laps 500 on, on, laps yeah. damn did they have um, to refuel uh, yeah, so they refuel and they have two. They have uh, they have two drivers. Okay, so it, it's a relay. Deal. Yeah, yeah, and it takes like uh, um, takes like over eight hours. Wow, um, that was really cool. The super modified race last weekend was badass. Have you seen any cool. rally cross? I haven't. That's actually we got to go to there. Yeah, that's, I'm told it's in, in Michigan. We're, yeah, it's here. Yeah. Um, get on I, it. I need to, I know, I know, right? Like, <laughs> find us a rally cross time. race. Yeah, there's I gotta like, go to there's that. There's some bucket list ones. Rally cross is one. Uh, Chili Bowl is another. Yeah. Um, uh, Knoxville Nationals, which are happening now with uh, 410 sprints, uh, wing sprints. That's a bucket list one. And then, uh, man, I don't know. I want to see. You like, need to get Haggerty to send you to Bonneville, too. Yeah. We, we actually got a guy right there, uh, uh, Brandon Gologli, who used to write for Hot Rod. He's out there right now, and he did. He's way smarter than me. Um, but yeah, but he, he needs he needs backup. Yeah, yeah, right. I know. I need to I need to I need to work that out. But yeah, there's there's definitely some bucket list ones. I've been super super blessed to have um, the summer that I've had. I keep my foot on the gas and uh, I keep finding these interesting. Some of the some of the most obscure stuff has been the most fun. You know, uh, I went to. Uh, uh, like even backcountry like late model shows yeah. like you that's that's when you can really polish your skills because there's nobody else around so you're not worried about getting in and in, in front of any lenses yeah. or anything like that you're not worried about like ticking anyone off um and you can get some you can really try and sharpen your skills so try some new stuff yeah that's cool man thank you yeah Good. absolutely we, uh, i want to read do another one next uh next july a year from now <laughs> and hear about all the indoor races you went to yeah i know like uh uh, we got some good ones coming up here. Uh, uh, I'm going to Pocono next weekend. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you're not going there, are you, for the Indy race? I'm going to be out in Pebble Beach doing my wine and oh, cheese. Oh, that's right. You're yeah. going to Pebble Beach. i got to go to Pocono. And then in November, i got to go to Texas for a race. I'm trying to think of what races we're going to. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure awesome, it out. man. Thanks a ton. Yeah, thanks for having me. We'll keep it up. To those that want to hear this on iTunes, it's coming. Yes, it's coming. <laughs> All right. Thanks, man. Yep. See you.